Hey, Gearheads, Jeff with Gear Report here at the Project Humvee Battle Wagon. What I'm going to do today is walk through things that were in our man's pack. We're going to give you the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Stay with us. Backpacking at Philmont is like backpacking anywhere with, with a few exceptions. What we're going to cover in this video talks specifically about our experience at Philmont Scout Ranch while we were backpacking. We were there for 12 days. 11 of those days were in the field living out of the backpacks with the gear that we have. For the most part, what we're talking about is going to apply to any kind of backpacking you do. There are some exceptions where Philmont does things differently, and I'll tell you about those as we get to them. So let's quickly go through the things that our man used that were sent for review at Gear Report. Obviously, just like I did and like Keith did, he had a set of the Cascade Mountain Tech hiking poles. Keith and I had the blue ones. Our man had the ones with this kind of lime green accent. I actually purchased these on Amazon before talking to Cascade Mountain Tech, and then they sent the other two pairs we used. Thrilled with how those worked out. He never really got the rhythm of these, using these the way I did. I'm not sure they were as much a benefit to our man as they were to me. You know, he said he liked them. He used three smart water bottles, and then as his fourth liter, he used this platypus one liter bag and platypus sent this drinking tube kit it'll actually screw onto a smart water bottle as well that's what we were going to do is use it on a smart water bottle but it collapses the bottle so we put it on this bag fantastic option just like with my homemade you know diy hydration bladder out of a smart water bottle this is out of a platypus one liter bag that he had in the side and had a drinking tube uh, that worked out really well, really pleased with that. Uh, where I was able to unscrew a smart water bottle and screw a new one on, he would have to, if he needed to refill it, unscrew the cap, pour from a smart water bottle into here, so maybe a little less convenient, but still worked out really well for him. Our man carried from my trail company their 70 liter backpack. It's an internal frame, but really it's like a sheet of plastic in here with some foam on it for padding. It doesn't have a rigid metal frame, internal or external. It doesn't have a carbon fiber frame like the Z packs. It's just this sheet of plastic that gives it that vertical rigidity and, and helps transfer the load a bit. But it's a pretty lightweight pack. This one's a little over two pounds. I think two pounds, three and a half ounces. So heavier than mine, but higher capacity. It has a variety of different cinch straps around so that instead of carrying a day pack for side hikes like when we went up to Baldy or when we went uh, up on the tooth you could take your your smellables and stuff out and compress this down to a 25 liter like a regular day pack and it worked out really well and it's light enough that you could do that it has a big pocket here with a zipper the two expanding you know kind of stretchy pockets on the side so two water bottles, two water bottles, that was full. He did not carry anything underneath that's got some straps and things where you could put a tent or a sleeping pad on the bottom and strap it on. He didn't do that, he put everything inside. Has compression straps on the side. You may have seen when I pulled this out, his hiking poles were tucked in and hooked on, you know, secured there. The top is a roll top, so it has a strap here and then this rolls down. It has a drawstring, whereas the Z-Packs had Velcro. This has a drawstring on the top, so you cinch it up and then roll it down and then secure it. This front pouch, it's one big pouch here. And let's see what he has in here. We talked about his fossils bowl that he used. As a crew, we carried two Whisperlite stoves. Tried to go with a uh, BRS fuel bottle. I had this from another stove and it fits the Whisper Light pump. The ones we ordered off of Amazon for this trip, when I calculated how much fuel based on fuel burn measurements that I did, we would have plenty if we took two of these bottles. But then come to find out uh, the ones that we ordered off of Amazon had a different thread pattern, wouldn't fit. So we ended up carrying one of these bottles just as a fuel storage bottle. And then the other one, we had to buy a MSR bottle at the Tooth of Time Trader. So this is the windscreen for the MSR Whisper Light. Uh, we actually found the Whisper Light for 45 bucks a piece on Amazon. And instead of shipping our existing stoves out there, just bought two new ones and had them delivered to Philmont, so they were waiting for us. This is our man's, because he had one that's a few years old as well. So we used these, and to be honest with you, I, I love and I hate 
the MSR Whisper Light. For the Philmont cooking method, where you have to use the massively, ridiculously massive eight quart pots, you need something with a larger base and better stability and better capacity than a lot of what, what you might call ultralight backpacking stoves that you can get today. That said, that's one of the reasons I hate the Philmont cooking method is it necessitates a huge pot, which means you have to have a huge stove, which is more weight, more stuff you have to carry. I don't think it's necessary at all. I think there are plenty of ways to solve that problem without carrying all this heavy stuff. That said, the Whisper Light is trail proven. Uh, I mean, there's a problem right there. It gets all sooted up, not a huge problem. People have been using them for years. We had two that we carried. One was a spare, one was primary. We actually needed the spare because one of the pumps broke. Uh, you see where our man's, his is, this is a fairly new pump, by the way, and that piece broke off, but also one of the pumps of the brand new stoves that we had shipped out there for us, one of these little tabs broke off and meant that if you were trying to pump up the pressure in the bottle, uh, the pump would come apart. While I like a lot of things about the Whisper Light stoves, they're too fiddly, there's too much of a learning curve, it's too easy to break something, as we saw on the trail. It's too easy to overfill the priming pan and scorch the ground or cause a big fireball, which then is gonna soot everything up and mean that you gotta take it apart and clean it. You know, too many things that require maintenance. I mean, they sell an annual maintenance kit for a reason. That's why I tend to prefer and would have liked to have had more time to test this indoor canister stove that actually looks beefy and heavy, but has about the same support size as the Whisper Light, but it's a little lower, which is good, and weighs a few grams less than the Whisper Light, and it hooks up to a canister, so there's no pumping, there's no spilling fuel, there's no worrying about is, did the pump break, there are no maintenance parts on it. So much easier, so much better. Had we had a little more time to do thorough testing on these, I'm fairly certain I'd have got another one. We'd have taken two of these instead of the Whisper Light. Uh, kind of kicking myself for that. Some of the people who went on this trek had used Whisper Lights every time and said, well, hey, it worked. We want to keep using what worked. And yeah, it works, but I, I think it's far from an ideal solution. Uh, there are better options out there today. When Whisper Lights came out 20 whatever years ago, they were fantastic, best option, but today I think they're better options. Uh, again, our men used a variety of Sea to Summit nano bags and the um, Ultrasil bags in four and eight liter sizes to organize things in his pack. He used the Outdoorsman Lab inflatable pad. This one's about an inch and a half thick, about 14, 15 ounces, blows up in six, seven, eight breaths, something like that. And it's actually more comfortable than the one that I used, I think. But again, a very budget option, non-insulated though. Worked great, no issues there. Let's see what else we have here. Ah, in this waterproof Sea to Summit nano stuff sack is the My Trail Company. This is an ultralight down hooded puffy jacket. Just like with his sleeping bag, our man chose to avoid down because it was likely we were gonna get wet and he didn't want to have his only sleeping you know, insulation possibly get compromised by water and lose its insulation effect. He chose to go with this synthetic military bag that weighed you know, about the same, packs down, you know, maybe a little bulkier than the down bag but just in case it got wet. As it turns out, we didn't get wet sleeping bags any, but we kind of got lucky. So with the down jacket, because he had some other insulation layers, it was a little less critical, but we got a bottle of downproof and treated it, actually treated it in a sink at the shower house at Philmont, and then ran it through the gentle cycle on the dryer to puff it up again before going on the trail. It didn't get wet, so we didn't get to test that. Made me really nervous that we'd not tested downproof to see how well it works, but he was comfortable, so I was comfortable with him doing that. He used another polycryo ground cloth, just like I did, and just stored it in a Ziploc. Again, uh, with a 70 liter bag, he didn't have to compress everything, so that worked for him. Had some more, uh, there's his laundry bag for, for washing clothes. Used the frog togs, and you know, like I said before, when he had the nosebleed and it bled on it, and we had to scrub it and sanitize it. That kind of broke down some of the waterproofness right up the front, but everything else was pretty good for this. And for the money, you know, I think we had less than 15 bucks in that for the top and the bottom. For the set, uh, that was phenomenal, and it's still pretty lightweight. 
and then wrapping things up for our man's gear for things that were sent in for us to review we have the my trail company ul3 it's a three-man ultralight tent it's three pounds so you know they were able to break it down one guy carried the poles another one carried the tarp another one carried the nest i'm not sure who carried the stakes but it was roughly one pound per person which is phenomenal and all three guys actually fit in it for the whole time pretty well although we did have a pole break we had it set up here at the gear report headquarters for a few days when we had storms coming through every evening no one was in it at the time so i'm not sure exactly how it happened but nothing nothing appeared to fall on it but one of the poles broke and they're all connected together so fortunately uh, they sent us a complete new pole set but before we went out in the field you know two we knew two things all right i was able to put it back together with the repair sleeve but the pole ruptured at one end it split open and that repair sleeve fixed it and it was good as new worked fine but we still got a new pole set before we went out in the field so i knew now we had two repair sleeves in case multiple poles broke and there are basically three different types of pole section that make this up so we took it apart and took one of each of those so we had spare pole sections and repair sleeves we were extra ready in case there were any issues and another pole broke because i knew it was going to be pretty harsh conditions out there and even through the torrential rain and everything the poles held up even with these three guys it was, it was comical sometimes watching them try to set this tent up and move it around and get the ground cloth centered get the rain fly on you know one guy picking up one end and the poles they're all connected together in like a big H shape so you know one guy lifting one side and another lifting the other end at the other side and it's kind of torquing and I'm cringing thinking oh they're gonna break these poles day after day they did that never broke them so held together kept them dry the whole time even with some monsoon rains absolutely fantastic really thrilled with the my trail company UL3 ultralight three-man tent last thing our man wore a pair of merrells he liked them they did well they didn't give him blisters maybe a little rubbing here and there pretty much held together and their mesh and pretty well ventilated and they're a little torn up in places but they survived okay so that's good my shoes and his were both like 50 bucks a pair so we went kind of cheap on the shoes because our budget ran out only thing he told me about these he didn't like is there's rubber there's the hard rubber like typical shoe sole tennis shoe sole rubber and then there's just kind of expanded you know closed cell foam rubber here those areas he would have liked to have and you can see where they're kind of chewed up here we walked on a lot of rocks and some of those sharp rocks poking in just the wrong place he could feel more than he would have liked so I'm not sure we would have picked these shoes again but maybe because they worked out okay and they're pretty light and they breathed really well and he didn't get blisters and he didn't roll his ankle that's another thing a lot of people will tell you, you have to wear boots we both wore trail runner shoes everyone in our crew wore trail runners we talked to other people who said oh i'm so glad that i'm wearing these big hiking boots because my ankle rolled several times and the boots saved me well guess what my ankle rolled in the trail runners quite a few times and what we did like our man you can see here he left them laced loosely so he'd just slide his feet in kept them that loose on the trail so if he hit a rock and his trail rolled the shoe would roll off and his foot may even come out or it may just come part way out but his ankle wouldn't roll the shoe would absorb that motion and protect his ankle instead of doing it by a heavy boot with a lot of support by just rolling and not taking his foot with it so i personally am a huge fan of trail running shoes and i think that for most people if your ankles are healthy and strong enough no reason to wear hiking boots trail runners will be just fine for you and every pound on your foot is supposed to translate into six or seven pounds worth of weight on your back so going with these were like eight ounces a piece for me for size 14. If I were wearing hiking boots, they'd probably be two or three times that amount each, which means effectively I'm doing a whole lot more work lifting these up and down all day. So I was very pleased with how these worked out. Thanks for sticking with us this long. Let me know what questions or comments you have. If you're going to film on, I hope you have a great trek. If you're just going backpacking, hope you have a great time out there on the trail as well. Let us know what questions you have. Please check out and support the brands that sent in products for us. We've been completely open and honest about what worked great, what didn't. Maybe not everything here is the right choice for you, but for the things that are, please support those brands. Let them know that you followed our trek here on Gear Report. That's it for now. I got to get to work. We'll see you on the trail. Thank mm -hmm. you.